It looks like before the September event dedicated to the future of the franchise, for which by the way we might actually have a date, Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed are going to have a presence at a couple of important gaming conventions and in this video we're going to have a look at what they might be bringing to the table, including the potential announcement or maybe a teaser for the rumored Assassin's Creed Nexus VR game, for which we have a bunch of information and some leaked visuals that we didn't share back in April. Plus, the Mentors Guild community program is going to be shut down in a few days and the same will go in September for the online services of several of the early Assassin's Creed games, including the multiplayer game modes and even DLCs. So we have a lot to discuss and we're so happy to be back at last, so let's dive into all the recent Assassin's Creed news. Yes, we are back. It took us almost two weeks. I'm still not out of COVID, but we are back with the videos here at Access the Animus. And while it hasn't been a huge couple of weeks, like I said, there are still more news to discuss. And the first one is that Ubisoft has finally announced a date for the next Ubisoft Forward event, which is their now classic online event for the new announcements and trailers, and in general defines the future releases of the company in the subsequent months. And now we know it's going to take place on September. September the 10th, 2022 at 12 p.m. PT or 9 p.m. CEST. And of course, many fans, us included, wondered if this is also going to be the event where all the announcements tied to the future of Assassin's Creed are going to be shared, considering that in the stream for the 15 years anniversary, it was indeed teased that an event dedicated to the future Assassin's Creed content would have taken place in September. So let's mark the date on the calendar, but while waiting for that, it seems like Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed are going back to have a physical presence at some events starting towards the end of this summer. We have seen them announcing a presence at Gamescom 2022, which is going to take place on August the 24th to August the 28th, and in itself it's an interesting announcement. Gamescom was and is more or less Europe's version of E3, with gaming companies announcing new games or releasing new trailers for the games they have already announced at E3, and of course several tens of thousands of fans going to the venue. Now this year E3 hasn't happened, some companies had their own online show while Ubisoft didn't, so what better time than this for some of the upcoming announcements that fans are expecting from them. Of course there has been some speculation around the rumored Assassin's Creed Rift to have some kind of presence or announcement at Gamescom, although I wouldn't hold my breath about it, because it looks like the majority of the main announcements are going to take place in September, which is a few days after Gamescom, so I would imagine this would be a much better platform platform for Skull and Bones, considering all the recent rumors and leaks about the game, and also for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, as hinted at by insider and leaker Tom Henderson. Still, Assassin's Creed could have a presence in the shape of the celebrations for the 15 years anniversary, that would be specifically the week dedicated to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, so depending on how big Ubisoft's presence is going to be, we might still find some Assassin's Creed content, and we at Access the Animals have always enjoyed Gamescom and the various activities that we were able to host alongside Ubisoft, so for sure we're going to keep our eyes peeled for any news concerning that event, especially considering that potentially there might be some other kind of Assassin's Assassin's Creed announcement in there as well, as we'll see later. A similar event but on a smaller scale is going to take place on the other side of the world in Toronto, Canada on the same days. Fan Expo Canada will take place on August the 25th to August the 28th and the reason we're mentioning this is that in this case they actually announced an Assassin's Creed presence there to celebrate the 15 years anniversary. I wouldn't expect any major announcements here too, but it's going to be interesting to see what kind of events and activities are going to be organized there, especially with regards to the Brotherhood week, considering the Brotherhood Ezio is indeed over the promotional picture for the event. One Assassin's Creed game that could be announced or at least have some kind of platform at Gamescom could be the rumored VR project Assassin's Creed Nexus. Now you may remember from our report back in April, Nexus is a VR game that was leaked by journalist Tom Henderson and that was bound to release in the 12 months following April 2022, so based on that leak, 9 months from now, and that is supposedly meant to feature many of the classic systems of the Assassin's Creed games, including stealth, melee combat, climbing and even more classic elements like the leap of faith and the use of the hidden blade. 
Back then in our video we did report how the game was rumored to allow fans to play as several main characters from the Assassin's Creed games, such as Ezio Auditore da Firenze, Cassandra of Sparta, Connor, Hatham Kenway and possibly more, in a total of 16 individual missions with a tutorial to get familiar with the game's controls. And apparently a leak that we didn't cover back in April did actually show this sort of introduction area to the missions. Of course, please consider that this, according to Redditor Echiketto, who also tested the game, was a beta build of Nexus, not the final product, but it kind of shows what the devs have been seemingly going for, with the main menu, the possibility to enter the Animus, with the loading room very much looking like the one in Assassin's Creed Unity, and from there accessing one of the missions, and if this leak is confirmed to be true, the first mission dedicated to Ezio Auditore will seemingly take place in 1509, that's right before the events of Assassin's Creed Revelations and will seemingly be set in Monterigioni where Ezio is going to meet his sister Claudia who has been trying to rebuild Monterigioni after the attack by the Borgia shown in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, although the repairs are proceeding slowly for some kind of external cause, and that's where Claudia actually suggests Ezio to find out out what's going on, but also teases him by saying that she's hidden a knickknack, if I'm reading correctly, that he loved as a child somewhere in the attic of Villa Auditore, in a room that is now holding a puzzle. So that's an interesting backstory for our mission called the Sword of Ezio that we might be playing in this game, where it does seem we're not only wandering around Monterigioni, but can also go inside buildings like Villa Auditore. And while most of the leaks or rumors about Nexus mention that these are going to be linear missions, it at least seems that there might be multiple objectives or at least things to do in the map. We also got a very tiny look at how Monterigioni might look in the game, but again this is a beta version from a while ago so don't hold to it too much. Echiketso also shared more info about what he tested with the game, including an arsenal comprising the hidden blade, a sword, throwing knives, smoke bombs, a crossbow too, then the size of the missions which are pretty big even though they include backtracking, the use of a baton to do the parkour actions, though you'll have to grab ledges and pull yourself up, the presence of in-game cutscenes at the start of the missions, and more information that you can find by clicking the dedicated link in the description. Also, Twitter user Brad Lynch seemingly shared a button map for the various actions that you can take in the game, which include an Animus Pulse and an Animus Scout options, the possibility of jumping while running, the trigger to deploy the hidden blade as you move the wrist, which sounds so cool, and more classic buttons. Of course, pick this with a grain of salt as well, it might really not represent the final product here. So yes, by the time Gamescom comes, we might be around 7 to 8 months from the rumor release of the game, so we might get an announce there, or this could also be encompassed in the announcements about the future of Assassin's Creed in the event in September. In any case, it looks like it's going to be a long time before we have some confirmations. On the more official side of things, you might have seen that Ubisoft is about to terminate the Mentors Guild community program on July the 13th. And for those of you who might not know, the Mentors Guild was a community program that was started in 2017 by Ubisoft, which had the objective of harnessing feedback on the games and the franchise as a whole from members of the community, helping them and the rest of the community be able to create better content, allowing for more interaction opportunities between fans and the development team, and so on. Ubisoft originally handpicked 10 members in 2017 ahead of the announcement of Assassin's Creed Origins, our own Sari being part of them, then a few more members joined ahead of the release of Odyssey in 2018, yours truly included, and then in 2020 the program was actually expanded to many more people across the world, reaching a number of more than 100 mentors. Through time the program was handled in different ways, with several activities undertaken by its members, several types of content produced by them, several events attended or organized by them, such as our Assassin's Creed trivias, cosplay gatherings and community dinners hosted at Gamescom, and has continuously evolved until its final closure on July the 13th. 
Many of you have asked us why this is happening and while we can't go into the specifics of it until Ubisoft decides to communicate on this, we were told this is part of an internal reorganization of the community based programs which is going to be finalized with a revamped version of the Star Players program, hence why you might have seen some members of the community announcing that they have been recently invited there. As for us, a bunch of members of the Access the Animus team have been part of the Star Players program for a long period of time or have been recently invited, so we'll surely share with you guys all the news coming from the new and revamped program anytime we get the chance to. Keeping to the topic of news that might disappoint some, a few days ago Ubisoft announced that the online servers for a number of early Assassin's Creed games are going to be decommissioned on September the 1st, 2022. We're talking about Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, Revelations 3 in its 2012 release, not the remastered one, and Liberation HD in its 2014 release, and apparently this is going to impact specific platforms and specific services for each game. What's worse is that these changes aren't just making the multiplayer modes unavailable on selected platforms, but in the case of PC players, they will also make the DLCs for some of these games unavailable, both in terms of installation but also in terms of access, even if you bought them already before the servers were stopped, which is not an amazing look considering the fans did spend money on them even if we're talking about several years ago. Ubisoft is saying that closing the online server services for some older games will allow them to focus their resources on quote unquote delivering great experiences for players who are playing newer or more popular titles, which is understandable, I haven't heard so frequently about a lot of people playing the multiplayer of the old games in quite some time, but I do know that there are still many communities enjoying these modes and features, so I do feel for them. So yeah, not an amazing set of news happening during the celebrations for the 15 years anniversary of the franchise, with a bunch of beloved multiplayer modes being decommissioned and the Mentors Guild community program being terminated as well, but while we'll keep an eye on the proceedings community wise with the evolution of the Star Players program, we have also tried and looked back at everything the Mentors Guild has done over its 5 years in our latest stream, so if you'd like to have a tiny walk in the past or if you never actually heard of the Mentors Guild, you can check that out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.